Well, hey, this is Adam, and welcome back to Rare Classic Cars. Today, a special treat and a new arrival. This 1967 Eldorado that is very, I'm going to use the word, unique. Why is it unique? It's an 18,000 mile, all original car, original paint, original red leather interior, sable black, no vinyl roof. Need I say more? These cars were super rare just to begin with. They made a little less than 18,000 of them. And when you compare that to, as an example, the Tornado, another beautiful car, part of the same platform with the Riviera, where they made almost 40,000 in the first year. This is comparatively rare. And to have one that's finished in sable black with no vinyl roof and red leather interior is just awesome. And it was sent to me by a YouTube viewer. So thank you for that, who contacted me and was trying to place this car in a good home. How could I say no uh, to something like this? I'll go on record as saying that to me, this 1967 Eldorado is the best styled GM car ever done, ever. Forget about some of the concept cars like the Aerovet, gorgeous car, another one of my favorites. But I think from a production car standpoint, it really doesn't get better than this. I mean, where else and do you find a car like this with these beautiful crease lines that are made to resemble the crease in a man's pants? It's also, it's so formal, but it's also so sporty, formal with this vertical D line, which evoked kind of the Duesenbergs and luxury cars of the 1930s era. But it, yet it looks athletic and sporty and formal and luxurious all at the same time. And it's amazing how that, this car does that. It, it just reads so many different things. Beautiful, beautiful feature lines and creases and gesture and presence. You just, people will say, well, they don't make cars like they used to. They can't make a car like this anymore. You could never have that point on the hood any longer with pedestrian impact standards. You couldn't have this wind split. You couldn't do a front end like that that's effectively a brick in the wind. That's why all cars now have that plan view or bird's eye tapering to them to get better airflow management around them. You have the higher deck lids now also for airflow management. You certainly couldn't do these pointy tail lights. Those would be a hazard. Couldn't do the toothpick A pillars. It wouldn't meet the roof crush standard. Couldn't do the hard top very easily anymore either. You could still do it. Mercedes does on some vehicles. It would be very, very expensive again because of the roof crush standard. So they're just not going to make cars like this anymore. So you might as well buy a classic. And as I mentioned, in 1967, they made a little under 18,000 of these. And there really aren't that many that are left. Um, the car was designed by a team of individuals. Cadillac design at the time was headed by a gentleman called Stan Parker. And his team, the assistant was Ed Taylor. And then some of the designers on the program included none other than rare classic cars, we'll call him a frequent guest, Wayne Cady. He checked the link in the description. He does a walk around of his black 1967 Eldorado and talks about some of his sketch work as well. There's two videos on that that we've done with Wayne. And uh, also Don Roper, who would later go on to do interiors for Cadillac in the early 70s. And don't fault Don for the poor materials that were used. That's, that's the finance team, not Don. But the Eldorado in 1967 was Cadillac's first mass-produced front-wheel drive vehicle, and it borrowed a lot from the Tornado, the torsion bar front sus uh, suspension setup, the single leaf, yes, single leaf on each side rear suspension, and then the longitudinally mounted front-wheel drive setup. And this car, the Eldorado, was one of a trio of, I think, really seminal GM cars, and it'd be really tough to argue maybe the top three General Motors cars in terms of design of the 1960s. This car, the 66 Tornado and the 66-67 Riviera. They're all just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful cars. But the front wheel drive costs, according to Wayne, about an extra $500 a car and consequently Cadillac kind of cheaped out in some of the other areas, as did Olds on the Tornado. One was that single leaf rear spring setup, which is, does not give these cars a luxurious ride. There's quite a bit of impact harshness uh, in terms of audible noise as well as, you know, the body just doesn't 
feel like it's as unsettled over broken pavement, probably because of that and this three-quarter length frame as opposed to a full perimeter frame. The frame terminates ahead of the rear shackles for the leaf spring setup. And on 1967, and including this car, this very car, one year only, they have crank windows in the rear. You got power windows in the front and crank windows standard in the rear. They tried to call it a vent window to sell it. It didn't work. It was a cost save move, plain and simple. But so many things about this car are one year only in terms of styling. On the exterior, you have the uh, turn signals that are in the bumper as opposed to the fenders where it would move in 1968. You also have a one year only exposed wiper with this beautiful trim piece. Uh, it would become hidden wipers in 1968. You have a one year only interior. Everything from the IP to the door panel to the seat stitch pattern to the crank windows in the back was one year only. Out back, you don't have the side marker lights on the side that would come in 1968. <clears throat> you, the tail lights would stay through 69 and 70. They became thin blades, which when Wayne transferred to Buick studio, he would copy on the 76 Regal Coupe because George Elgis, the division manager, asked him to do that. Uh, and the reverse light in 69 moved up into the fuel filler door. So a lot of things change. You also have these vents that exhaust out the in-cabin air in the uh, rear quarter panels. So a lot of interesting things. And this car is a well-optioned car. It's got optional disc brakes up front, which is really rare. It has tilt telescope wheel, cruise control, automatic headlamp dimmer, twilight sentinel, power seat, uh, AM FM radio with power antenna, automatic trunk release. So quite a few different options on this particular car as well. And the leather was also an option over the houndstooth interior. So let's take a walk around the car, take the camera off, get a closer look and see why I think that this is the best style car that GM ever did. All right, let's walk around the car. So as I said, a lot of unique one-year-only content on the 67. I'll just point out some of the differences. As I mentioned here, this on 68 becomes the turn signal, moves from the bumper up there because Cadillac had challenges with the fitment of this. If you watched Wayne Cady's video where he walks around his 67 Eldorado, Wayne, for those who are not aware, was one of the designers on this car and later became Cadillac chief designer. He walks around the car and also we have a sit-down interview with him on the channel talking about his involvement in it and what he did. But this uh, had fitment issues at the factory because this is a cast piece, this is a stamp piece, so there's a lot of variation between them. And Cadillac got a lot of customer complaints about it, and so after one year they changed it and it also helped with the side marker light requirement. As I mentioned, the hidden headlights were two years only, 67 and 68 only. 67 is the only year with the exposed wipers and I think this beautiful 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 trim piece here that is for the air intake just looks great in 68 they would go to hidden wipers there's this cutout section here as well a little bit different in terms of the setup And then out back, this rear end would evolve over time as well with, in 69, there'd be a little reverse light here. 70, these tail lights change to just be thin little blades as opposed to what they are in 67 through 69. These inlets would go away shortly after the 67 model year. I shouldn't call them inlets, I should call them uh, flow-through ventilation system exhausts, actually. And just an overall stunning car. I mean, look at, look at the proportions of this car. Absolutely beautiful. Cadillac always had these kind of squarish wheel arches. And for the layperson, you might not pick up on that trend, but it was definitely a Cadillac hallmark for many years, into the 80s and later even. And these are just beautifully modeled. They have kind of these liquid reflections associated with them that Ford just really, I love my Fords, but Ford just couldn't quite do this the same. If you watch the interviews with John Manoogian, you'll see he says that GM only hired fine artists as sculptors. 
during this period, and it certainly shows in the vehicles. How do you improve upon this? And what a deck lid. I mean, to try to get this entire thing stamped with this radius, this kind of feature line here, another feature line here. Wayne actually related that the hardest part of this car to stamp, according to Stan Parker, who was the chief designer, was this quarter panel because of this fold over and trying to get this exactly right, which you can really see that is not an easy piece to stamp. Interestingly, during this period, two different groups within General Motors did the body engineering. This wasn't all stamped by Cadillac. Cadillac, in essence, owned from the cowl forward. From the cowl rearward was a group called Fisher Body. So two different engineering teams were responsible for this car. Cadillac did the forward area and Fisher Body did the back. This hood is also two pieces. It's joined in the middle here where this molding disguises the seam and it's metal finished down here. In 71, this would later become a one piece hood despite it being larger. And metal finishing was about a dollar an inch. So between the front and the back of the hood where there's no molding, they saved about $9 a car making that one piece on the 71s. But on this car, it's a two-piece hood. Turning to the inside for a minute. Just a beautiful interior and one year only interior. The door panels would change in 68. These are kind of strange door panels where you've got a flocked pocket here that's the door pull. Really weird. That would change in 68. They'd also put real wood trim on here. In 69, this handle on the driver's side for the rear passenger would get costed out by Calvin Warner, the then new division general manager, who would also cost out the hidden headlights. Amazing, even on Cadillacs they had cost optimization. Some people are going to chuckle at me calling it optimization, but that's what I'm going to call it. Then here you have the one year only dash in 68, this instrument panel hood would move leftward and the vent would move outside of it to get more airflow to the passenger space as well. This car does have, as I mentioned, the tilt telescoping wheel. You can see the unlock lock there that moves it in and out, the tilt lever. Also has the dial a cruise where you rotate this dial here to whatever speed you want and then you push this button forward and the cruise gets set. It does, as I said, have automatic climate control. 1964 was the first year for Cadillac automatic climate control. It was exclusive for Cadillac for one year. Other divisions got it in 65. My 65 Bonneville even has it. And then these door locks on this car are vacuum. They're not electric. So when you have, uh, when you push the button, there really is not any noise associated with it. And then in the back we have something that the finance person in me loves, the crank for the so-called vent window. And these crank into the sail panel here. They don't go down. So just a little bit of travel and that's how they operate. This car does have a power seat as well, six-way power seat. And Overall, just a stunning dash. These are kind of interesting in that to raise and lower the power antenna, you push this button in and you pull it out to raise and lower it. it does have AM FM radio, you can see. Beautiful steering wheel. There is some pitting, light pitting on the speedometer face there, which is very typical in 67, particularly for this car and cars that were in climates where the air conditioning was used quite frequently. So this was originally a Texas car owned by a wealthy cattle rancher. And the reason why it has such low mileage is he preferred to be chauffeured around in his Rolls Royce and didn't really drive this car much. I mean, you can even see the floor mat is great shape. Pedals are in nice shape. 
I guess I should put the floor mat over the bright light dimmer switch there. Car does have the auto dimming control. You can move this lever further and there's a sensor at the front of the car that will automatically dim your headlights. They stay on bright all the time until it senses oncoming light. And then Twilight Sentinel automatically turns your lights on at night and you can move it over here or off to uh, change the delay in terms of how long the lights stay on after you shut the key off. It does have three speed wipers, not just two. And overall, gosh, this interior just looks so rich in red. Look at the carpeting going all the way up the door panel as opposed to just being in the lower kick panel. Beautiful perforated leather seats. They had a standard houndstooth interior in these cars that was also super cool. But it doesn't get much better than red leather. Let's take a look at the trunk and also push the door lock button here. You can take a look, watch. So it's vacuum, as is the trunk release, which is in here. This doesn't have the power pull down, my 69 does, which is also vacuum. A lot of stuff in here from the previous owner that I gotta sort through. You can see here different options that the car has. Won an AC, AACA award, which you can see there. Still has the original spare in the box. And all the trunk trim here is in really nice shape. So still sorting through that, but just really nice overall. Huge trunk. And I mean, huge trunk lid. And it just closes like that. Now, under hood, as I mentioned, there's the Cadillac 429 cubic inch engine here. Which I think was making 340 horsepower in that zip code. Of course, gross horsepower. And here you have it. Yes, this orange oil fill cap is stock. They did come with that. Car does have a newer AC compressor on it. That is the auto leveling pump for the rear suspension. Hooks up to sucks the vacuum in after the air cleaner intake. And it's powered by vacuum. It is not electrically operated. So I mentioned this car is front wheel drive and that was something that the Eldorado stole the Tornado technology for that. This does have the Cadillac V8, whereas obviously the Tornado had the Olds V8, the 425 engine, cubic inch engine. But it has the same transmission, the turbo hydromatic 425 that has the torque converter after the engine and then a high vo chain that comes over here and then drives the transmission which is pointing forward in the car to a front differential and then there are two half shafts that go to the front wheels. So you can see the engine's kind of sitting forward here a little bit because of that. These 429s are actually quite good. They do have problems with the aluminum timing cover and the oil pump is housed in there. Sometimes the oil pump wears through the timing cover and you lose oil pressure. Thankfully with low mileage, it's not an issue like on this one. This one just runs really nicely. And then of course you've got the high C juice can for all the vacuum reservoirs. You've got another vacuum reservoir over here. And when I got this car, it would kind of crank, but it would crank slowly. So I've put in a battery temporarily here and I have no idea what's going on with this battery but this was what was in it which we can explore more later this is not a battery topper this is an old 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 Delco battery with these eyes that are removable to put the acid in I have no idea if this is the original battery to the car it was a new old stock battery what it is. In any event, it wasn't keeping a good charge, so I just put this in here for now. Don't want to burn out your alternator and starter with weak batteries. I mean, look at how clean this car is, though. Just no dirt, road grime, all the wiring and stuff. Looks good, the vacuum hoses. 
This car runs really cool. Cadillac, you had really good radiators in this era. Big three-wheel radiators. I've never had a problem with cooling on my Cadillacs. And the car runs great. Let's start it up here. Just runs beautifully smooth. He has a power steering cooler. Quiet exhaust. And yes, some people are asking, is this painted back window molding factory? Well, if it, the car had a vinyl top, these would be grained like the vinyl top, which this one is not, it's smooth. And according to the Cadillac LaSalle Club, that is correct. Some cars did have a chrome molding. I think it depended upon where they were built, but this is how this car came. If you have any more information on these, sometimes you do see them with chrome molding, sometimes you don't. But my understanding is it really depends. You can also see here, this backlight has a V in it, and it's got a etched groove that they then put a hot wire in to bend it to make this pointed V. Similar technology was used on the Tornado XS, 77 Caprice Coupe. Really unique technique. I think for GM, this was the first car to use that. You can see the groove in the middle there. So just an absolutely stunning car. You can even look at under hood here. Wow. And here's the body tag, you can see paint code 10 and then EYSMK that bottom line there is the option content I don't remember offhand what each of those stand for but they do know things like power seats automatic climate control things like that trunk release I believe there's codes online to decode that that's the cruise control box by the way there take one last look around just an absolutely stunning car the pinnacle of General Motors design this car did have door edge guards originally but taking them off I mean they look terrible on here it's just such a clean body side why would you want a door edge guard on there Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this presentation of the 67 Eldorado. Stay tuned for a comparison with my 67 Riviera. Thanks for watching this video on the 67 Eldorado. Be sure to check out the videos with Wayne Cady, who is a designer on this program. I'll put the link in the description below. And also stay tuned for a comparison with my 1967 Riviera, its platform mate. Until then, check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right. And thanks again for watching.